Hey everyone, tonight at Tabletop Bookshelf, I'll be doing an actual play, Whispers in the Walls, a solo horror journaling game. This is my first time actually doing a playthrough, so uh, I'm excited that you get to share this with me. I'll talk through as I go through the setup here, and after that it's really a game of drawing cards, prompts, and journaling. So I will be doing that, and then I will be talking to the camera, maybe a little bit in character. Uh, as I solve the mystery of what happened. You are playing, taking the role of a private investigator and you are explaining what happened, uh, trying to describe a murder. This situation, I'm going to say that there was, I'm a, we'll say I'm, a, I'm an investigator who's known for working with certain paranormal situations. I've been hired by a family to help understand what happened to their teenage son. So as we start off the game, the first thing you have to do is you construct your Whispers deck. So I'm going to be using these, these Fulton Noir playing cards here. First thing you want to do is pull out the two Jokers. This Noir deck, these are the, they are the these cats here. Uh, and the rest of the spades, because this is a new deck, they're all together. We'll pull those over. And then the rest of the cards become another deck. So we have the jokers and spades into their own deck. And for normal difficulty, you use both jokers. Shuffle these together, and these create the hollows deck. And the rest become the secrets deck. Next up. Alright, so we've got that. I'll take the remaining cards. These are the this is the secrets deck. Give them a final cut here. Now we've got our hollows deck and our secrets deck. And the next thing we do is we take three cards from the hollows deck and six cards from the secrets deck. And this make, creates the whispers deck. Now the interesting thing here is that the the jokers there's two in here so it could be that i draw none there are no jokers the jokers in general have more horrific things happen but it could be that i draw you know two one two three it's one two three four five six Now I've got those. I have nine cards. This is my Whispers deck. Let's get started with Whispers in the Walls, a solo horror journaling game from Pandion Games. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to pick the first one that's going to describe our location. Five of Clubs. So the location I've drawn here is a Victorian mansion. The exterior stonework is worn, smooth, and stained with decades of rain. And inside the long, narrow floorboards creak and moan as the house breathes. Exquisite carvings and staircases lead into dark hallways. And the cellar door is bolted, but its hinges are rusted. Dust motes hang motionlessly in the air. So describe the state of the furnishings. Are they fresh, dust covered? I'm gonna say they um, mostly broken up. This uh, old Victorian house clearly was a hangout for teenagers. There's graffiti on the wall. There might have been some nice antiques at some point, but they since uh, deteriorated. The last meal is still half prepared in the kitchen. Well, I'm gonna say that half meal is a leftover bag of half a box of fried chicken. Now it's got smell of rot and flies buzzing around it. So that sets up our first location in this Victorian mansion run down Broken out, destroyed, smells a bit of rot.
So then uh, after we do the location, we draw and we continue the story. Queen of spades. A spade is a hollow. And I have to describe the room I'm in. Say I'm in maybe was a library at some point. They always have some sort of fireplace in the corner or in the wall. Maybe that's where the food was kind of scattered about. Uh, you can see the ash of something that was once burnt there. But the whole of the room begins to fold in upon me and it closes in tighter. The furnishings folding like a flat paper diorama. Imagine these crumbling pieces of furniture flattening, becoming two-dimensional. And then I'm closed in tight. And the darkness is deep and confining. I can hear footsteps above me, muffled voices of mourners. Dry dirt scatters on the top of the coffin. As I look around, I find a memento of someone quietly placed before the lid was sealed. Describe the memento left to the rightful owner of this coffin. So this room pulls in. It feels like I am in this coffin. In this coffin, I can recognize in the clothes I'm wearing, this is the coffin of the teenager who died. So in this case, I'm going to roll for the memento. There are some rolling tables in the back of the book here. <clears throat> we could have an adjective. 61. A voodoo. 25. A voodoo doll. Amazingly enough, a voodoo doll. So we'll say something that maybe might not have been seen tiny voodoo doll hidden in the boot of this teenager. Small, a couple inches, but a scribbled frown on the face. With that, the room unfolds and I'm back to where I started. I attune again. Ten of clubs. I'm lifted by an unknown force and plastered to the ceiling above, looking directly down below. I hadn't noticed before, but the layout of the room spells a single short word. Once the ceiling thinks you've grasped what it wants to show you, I'm released unceremoniously to the ground with a thud. What was the word spelled out? In the layout of the room. Perhaps it was a jumble of four letters. Well, I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the roller at the back of the rolling tables, and I'm gonna use an object or a modern word. How about that? Whoops. Fifty six. Got holding cells. So we'll say it's cells. I see cells on the ground. Is it body cells? Is it prison cells? It's hard for me to know for sure. So I tune once again. Four of diamonds. Water bubbles up from the seams of the floor pushing its way through, gurgling, bellowing, crying. It resolves into a tune you recognize, the pressure of the water through the gaps, thrumming a lost song. The interior now smells of wet dust and mold. What tune does the floor hum to me? How do I know it? Gently I hear humming, and it's unmistakable. It's a happy birthday. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Time to tune. Six of spades. My second hollow. A deafening sound erupts like bones breaking from a long fall. The floor splits and ruptures, and I fall into a starry expanse. I continue falling through the fissure, the floor fading to distance before I land softly among the stars. In front of you, on a marble pedestal, is a partially burned book. I open the book. I see a disjointed animated memory. What can I make out of the memory? Let's find out. An object. It's a chainsaw. Something else. A room. A theater. A chainsaw in a theater. Someone had a performance. It didn't go well. Something was split. A birthday cake split. A cell split. A chainsaw splitting. Who was splitting? I tune again. Ace of Hearts. I'm back in the library. Then there's the pin pricks of blood. And they seep from the walls. I see them slowly. Until they gush forth, filling the room with warm, sickly, iron-smelling liquid. It fills my nostrils and throat like chewing on metal shavings. And then suddenly it stops and drains away. And there's a bathtub ring of thick red around the outside of the room. How high does it get before it ends? The ring stops at the edge of something specific. What is it? Let's find out what it stops again. Let's roll. Candles. It goes up to the top of those candles. As though it snuffs them out. There was some sort of darkness that happened here. In darkness, the candles blown out like the candles of a birthday cake. Things are starting to come together. Six of clubs. Critters, bugs, spiders, and dust motes. You aren't sure if they're alive, but there's hundreds of them. The blood drops against the wall, coalesce into these small creatures. They scurry out of the corners of the ceiling and flow down around me. A scene sets up. The majority of the critters, encircle a smaller number, seem to be acting out a play. The others take turns as necessary. There's something enchanting and grotesque as these small, blood-red creatures do this play. What scene is being acted out? It's a birthday scene, of course, right? I see candles being blown out, but not by, there's something else coming down, something smashing through everything, something large. All right, two of diamonds, the floors, air vents, seep and pulse a pungent air into the room it's intoxicating and then suffocating with how overpowering the scent is it permeates your entire being and pushes all of the air from your lungs just as you run to open a window and pull in some more sweet oxygen the pressure subsides and you breathe once more what smell is the floor showing you you peer into the vent and something's at the bottom what do you see it's smell of candles burning wax 
It becomes suffocating. Smoke. I can barely breathe. I look inside, and in the middle, the bottom, through this vent that's been damaged, there's a candle on the bottom, covered in blood. And what is that? Wood chips? A splinter? The final card. I'm close now. The walls split and peel back like it's been vivisected, and from the dark between, a tendril lashes out and grabs me by the throat, and it pulls me in before closing shut. I struggle and writhe, but it forces your head to look down this black alleyway, and I relax and reach out. Somewhere, it pulls me behind, behind the house, into the back. I'm pulled into the darkness. The tundral is pulling me through the mud, through blood. And there it is. A tree, limb, huge, cracked. Someone smashed. Someone's skull smashed in by this tree limb. You can see the blood. Is that bits of hair? Blonde hair of a teenager that's now buried. Resolution. I'm back. Laughter erupts from the walls, the kind only felt when a great stress is lifted and the adrenaline can finally leave the system. It's the laughter of a teenager. It's always is this with laughter. It turns to sobs. The t tears, they flow down the walls and they begin to fill the room. And I try the door, but it's locked. I look over the note and I conclude about what's happening. There was laughter. There was a party celebration but someone at that party held grudges it was a birthday it was that moment when the teenager was asked to close his eyes and made a make a wish that the jealous friend who had tried voodoo had tried other things nothing seemed to work his rage grew. It was simple. Close your eyes. Make a wish. And the branch hidden in the debris picked to fit in those big hands to smash across the back of his friend's skull to dispose in the dirt behind the building, in the mud, never to be found, except by me. That's it. That's Whispers in the Walls uh, from Pandian Games. So thank you uh, to Pandian and to Andy for creating this. We can see that this is a this is a mystery. Uh, ghost story simulator in a way uh, and uh, I had a lot of fun running through it I hope you had a lot of fun watching me play through it and kind of weave this story together as this came and it, this is highly replayable I didn't have any jokers and uh, scary things happen with jokers so uh, definitely worth another playthrough you can pick this up in at our shop at tabletop bookshelf along with those these uh, noir cards are available uh, I think they're really just lovely and great to use for to play with something like this so check it out uh, we'll be doing more of these if you like what i'm doing here like and subscribe of course and uh, i'll see you next time at tabletop bookshelf thanks